Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Your home for all content, Lord of the Rings Home. Got kind of an interesting video for you today. It's basically going to be a big update video because we had a lot actually happen this week. Uh, we, you know, we got glyphs this week. We got the bomber kit released. Um, but there was also a lot of stuff in the glyph update that was the journey ahead that was kind of maybe flew under the radar and a lot of things broke, but there's some quality of life stuff that they didn't really include in the update notes. So I just kind of wanted to take a video and sort of go through all of it. And if you weren't paying attention to the Discord, which a lot of people, you know, don't spend the, their, their whole day paying attention to the official Discord, I just wanted this to be a place where for this particular instance, you can kind of be like, oh, yeah, okay, this is everything that happened because it was actually a decent amount of stuff that happened. So we'll start with the, can't you know, stuff in the updates. We'll talk about the bugs, quality of life stuff, compensation. We'll get through all of it. Let's start with the fact that they added Denethor to... Hard node 4 4, so he's become farmable. Now all of Gondor is farmable. And then, sort of, I don't know, I think this was kind of unintentional, but they also ended up moving a bunch of other characters' hard nodes from where they were previously. So that includes Yeftu, Frodo, Wex, Eldin, Leliel, and Arwen. People really noticed, of course, when they went to go farm their Eldin and Arwen shards, and they're like, oh, why doesn't, why isn't this three starred anymore? So Arwen moved from 5 5 to 5 4 in Shadow. Um, five four, I think you'll probably still be okay. Five three is really the hard one. Eladin moved from five nine lights to hard light five eight, and I actually think hard light five eight is more or is a little bit more difficult or challenging. However, I think if you got Elrond the second time around, and just actually just generally the fact that you have glyphs, you should be okay here to once again three star that. I haven't seen anybody have too much trouble with that now that we have glyphs. So that's good, but just be aware of that if you weren't already aware of it. They've moved some stuff around. Um, and now we'll get into maybe not more, con I mean, a little bit more controversial stuff. Maybe not the top half here, but they rebalanced some in characters. Basically, they found them to be too weak at lower levels, and they've done, you know, essentially all of this rebalancing stuff. Uh, it's not clear to me exactly what they've changed. However, um, a funny sort of consequence or side effect of this is that now if Aemir summon is out and you do the call to assist with Eowyn, you actually end up calling the summon because the summon has so much damage. Um, so I think the goal with these summons is just like, you know, they have, they have low health, like low survivability, but they either have like a lot of utility like Charu summon or they have just like insane damage. So I don't know. I think this is, they basically buff them. I think this is a pretty good change and probably a pretty necessary change. Pretty happy with this. Additionally, a lot of Haradrim people are pretty happy because they gave additional focus to Robol's um, ability. I think this was, I think this was her passive, but basically she, I'm pretty sure it's her passive. Uh, Robol is now giving out a way more focus um, and that's what you need for Haradrim. And that was one of the, I think, big sticking points for a lot of people who invested in Haradrim was it just didn't feel like they were able to do what they're supposed to do because of their lack of focus. That's supposed to help with that. Obviously, glyphs are going to help with that too. But this last section here, they adjusted the Mines of Moria difficulty for... Um, just the difficulty for stuff got adjusted to account for glyphs. Um, let me just read it. With the introduction of glyphs, difficulty four for all raid chapters has been adjusted to better enable squads that have invested in glyphs to perform well at this difficulty. Difficulty five will continue to be very difficult for most squads. I've seen some pretty mixed reviews. It seems like they've definitely, I mean, they, they've said they've done the adjustment. People don't know whether they adjusted it down or up. Um, I've seen people complain they can't do 1.5 million in Chapter 1 Difficulty 4 now, and then I've seen people say, I can get it much easier now than I did previously. So it's unclear to me exactly what the issue is, whether it's like people's old strategy doesn't work and they aren't aware of a new strategy, or... Um, certain people are getting lucky or what. Uh, I've now seen people do difficulty four and get over 900k in chapter four as well. I wasn't able to personally do that on stream, but it's somebody showed me screenshots of them doing it and you know, you, you can do it. Doing it in chapter three as well and chapter four. So um, cha difficulty four becoming achievable with glyphs in all four chapters. I think that's probably a better enabling of squads but yes it's it's hard to say exactly what they did and they're being vague about it um i think if you have glyphs on your raid squad 
you should be trying to do the next difficulty up and just get a feel for it. And it, I'm not saying it's going to, you know, it's not going to be one of those things where you just like, oh, I go in and now I've got 1.5 million points and that was easy. And all I needed to do was put level five glyphs on everybody. I think you're still going to have to learn the fight. You're still going to have to learn some sort of strategy, tactics, whatever. Uh, maybe optimize glyphs in a better way. But I think it's definitely worth trying and seeing what you can do there. Um, so, but that's maybe a little bit controversial sort of stuff here. Okay. With the update, though, a number of bugs got introduced into the game. I think the biggest one is that Chapter 3 basically was broken. And this actually happened while my guild was in Chapter 3. Basically, after the update, the orcs are going multiple times in a row and applying like two to three capture stacks. One orc is applying like two to three capture stacks. Um, it's really, really bad. So they actually sounds like they brought in some extra external help to help do this issue it's supposed to be fixed in a hot fix next week i'm hoping that in that hot fix we are going to be getting uh bomber character in game and so we can look at his stats and see all that sort of stuff but also getting some sort of goblin packs for people who are maybe close to unlocking thorn or thinking about unlocking thorn um, because we haven't gotten those yet so i'm hoping that comes next week they said it was going to be a hot fix next week so if you can i know my guild is delaying um starting the raid until tomorrow that way we get into chapter three on tuesday and we're hoping that there's a hot fix for chapter three by then although we'll see it may take longer to fix than just uh monday and tuesday we'll see but importantly it will be making compensation available to players um, this upcoming upcoming good make good package will cover cover several issues such as the raid guild chest issue, bonus chest objective issue, chapter three captured stacks issue, and the missing daily reward for the last day of November. Uh, we appreciate your patience and hope to roll out the above next week. So we should be seeing some form of compensation for these issues next week. If you don't know what these all are, I will quickly go through them. Uh, the raid guild chest issue, also when they initially updated, basically the chests were just displaying. What you, were, what you would get additionally in terms of rewards, uh, but it wasn't cumulative. So you would just get like, oh, chest three has more Gandalf shards than chest two. And so you just ended up with a few extra Gandalf shards and none of the other stuff. So um, they've made good on that, or they fixed that rather, and then people will be getting compensation for that. My guess is that certain people will be getting compensation for that, not everybody. Some of these, my guess, will be more targeted. Some of them will be um, going out to everybody. Bonus chest objective issue. There was a day or two where claiming the bonus chest did not complete the objective and therefore you could not complete your daily objectives. My free-to-play account definitely suffered from that. That should be fixed now. Chapter 3 issue I just talked about. And then one that was kind of a little bit older, people weren't able to claim that last reward for the login calendar for November, even though they had logged in. It sort of just got deleted and they weren't able to claim it. So we should be getting all that stuff soon. Uh, this coming up week, which is good because they've been a little bit vague about whether they're going to give compensation or not. I think this is a goodwill um, being extended to the player base, and I'm very, very glad to see compensation because for some of these issues, it's definitely necessary to see that. Um, let me tell you about one thing that got changed between when they released this news article and uh, when things went into the game. The funny thing here is, I'll show you right at the top here, right? says initial glyph sets are these the major sets and the below sets are subject to change and one of them did change this first one here in fact um here says lembus on wave start gain one stamina the first time each ability is used in a wave gain one stamina so that implies if you use your two special abilities you should be getting one stamina back each time you use that ability the first time so about three stamina Instead, it's been changed to two stamina here. So let me show you what it is in game. Instead, I'll go to my Elrond who has a Lembus kit or set rather. I do like the UI. I mean, they obviously everybody knows they updated the UI. I think it looks really good. I'm pretty happy about it. Um, and then you can see the text here gain one stamina on wave start and after the first time this character uses an ability in a wave. So it's after you use that first ability, not after you use each ability. What that means is that Lembus went from giving three stamina total to two stamina total. One at the start of the encounter. So for Elrond, that puts one stamina into his wave, so he can wave first turn. 
And then as soon as he waves, he gets one stamina back in his wave because his heal is still full. And so when it comes back to your turn, you'll see two little stamina nuggets in there instead of one, and your heal will still be full. That's a nerf to the Lemba set. I still think there are certain characters that would benefit from the Lemba set, um, Elrond being one of them. But I will talk, I, I want to make a video that's kind of just like a glyphs basic video. Bailshot did a good explainer video as well. Um, but I want to kind of do my own one as well and give you a lot of my first impressions for glyphs. I do want to say that there is sort of this, I talk about this in the, what I recorded for good glyph guides with teacher today as well, but there's sort of this expectation that there's like some sort of optimized set and stats for each character. And I think actually the way that they've designed it in the current state of the game, that's not really how you should be approaching it because people play the characters in different ways. They've designed them um, such that it's not just these, uh, unfortunately for Torm, not these like cookie cutter teams and you have to mix and match and you can play different characters even uh, different ways and use them for different things. And I think what you put on in terms of glyphs um, will make a difference in how you want to play, which is the intention of the whole glyph system in the first place, something that they've been talking about. That being said, of course, there are certain guidelines and tips and things that you should or shouldn't do, things you should be thinking about to help guide you in that way. But uh, I don't think there's like necessarily like a perfect glyph set for, you know, like there's not, there's not as much of a best in slot option to use a WoW term. Um, than there is maybe for uh, other types of games for mods. Um, but I'm actually, I'm, I'm very much enjoying the glyph stuff. Let's talk about Uders. Oh, right. I told you. Of, of uh, the other things that came to the game is we got the Uders event. Uders event. Um, so if you haven't done it already, this T5 here, the one that requires three star, you can do it level one G1. Um, I think the order. Maybe I'll just, I'll just go in, oops, and I'll, I'll show you what I think the order was, but actually I think when I did it on my free-to-play account, again, level one G1, I did, I think I just basically set it on auto and unselected the circle there, and after a number of tries, like 10 or 15 tries, it eventually just auto won because the goblins are actually strong enough to sort of do it on their own, but I think one of the orders you can kind of go for here is this guy, and then Eowyn, and then some of these guys, this guy hits really hard too. So I tend to use Goblin Chef to steal certain boons. Like I know he's about to take somebody out because he's got might. I might steal with Goblin Chef. You can also steal taunts here with Goblin Chef. And then it won't ta put taunt on him. It'll just sort of take them away, if that makes sense. Um, so if you haven't done it yet, you can still do it. No investment at all, which is a great change for Marquise. But if you find it a little frustrating, you can, of course, take them up to level 25, put glyphs on them some throwaway sets and basically just it's a cakewalk at that point right there are some bugs it seems with ooters one of them is when he especially in t6 where there's an eothane when somebody who has bleed aoe's um we learned with clarification from the when uh during the kit release that he's only going to retaliate once and he would only put up one stack or two stacks of provoke depending on kind of what level you have Uders at, right? Well, when I did the T6 event, after Eothane's um, AoE, Eothane had bleed, he came in, he retaliated, but he didn't put up a stack of Provoke. And I only have mine such that he only gets one stack of Provoke, so I think there is a bug here in that he either... He either retaliates and like the or the AOE just automatically clears his provoke off, like it's a weird order of operations thing, or it's just not somehow triggering his provoke. Um, I'm not exactly sure what's going on there, but that's one bug that's happening with Uders, and then it doesn't actually show here, but sometimes it will show you having level 99 glyphs and the wrong glyph set. Oh, actually, it does show it here. So uh, I've beat the game. I have the max level of glyphs you can get, and you can see that this is the actually the set. This is, uh, this should be, where is it? It's a Lifestealer set, which never used the Lifestealer set. But actually, it is the Bloodlust set. So there's a vis some visual bugs with Uders right now. Something to be aware of. Okay. Let's move on to talking about the raid. 
if you started the raid before the glyph update and you finished like one chapter, you can go in to your personal reward track for those previously completed chapters and you can go and get these uh, scrolls here. So these will still be in there. So it kind of retroactively worked um, depending on when you started the raid. Make sure you just go back to the chapters and make sure you get all these because you can only really get these from the raids, right? Speaking of raids, there is, outside of the chapter three stuff, there is now an end of chapter four raid cinematic, a little polish, something that people were asking for, something that, um, yeah, we asked them for and then they delivered on and I finally got a chance to see it and it is pretty awesome. So make sure you check it out because that's the kind of polish and quality of life stuff that we've been asking for. They delivered on it and it's, uh, it's incredible and they deserve some props for that. But speaking of raid stuff, uh, two things. One, these are a great deal. Make sure you're buying these, these glyphs here at the bottom. You get either one or two for below the cost it takes to level them up to level five. So even if they aren't something you want, you can sell them if you want the extra gold there. Um, actually, it might not, it might still be, you might not get gold positive out of that. So, but still it's, it's, I think it's a really nice gesture to put these in there at such a low cost thing I do want to show you though for sure is in the raid store you can get two of these illusion scrolls for 60 um, I think this is for 60 these gold tokens not the blue ones I think this is a really good deal and that you should start stockpiling these scrolls are definitely going to be the gate um, so once you start to get glyphs that you really like on your characters and you want to upgrade them more specifically for the primaries not necessarily the secondaries. Maybe you like the secondaries and they're good and that's why you're upgrading it, but you want to continue juicing your characters and you need to get the primaries up. This is the way to do it. So I think it's worth starting to stockpile these if you have the extra stuff up here. Those um, regular raid coins. Let's talk actually about, while we're in the shop, let's talk about some quality of life features that they added that they didn't actually mention. Watch this. Did you notice that? The shop did not scroll all the way back up. That's something they've added in. It's a huge quality of life feature. Finally, it's, <laughs> it's actually my favorite quality of life feature. It's so good. I'm so glad that they finally fixed that and got that in here. I kind of like to imagine that one of the people on the dev team was just like playing the game late at night and having to constantly scroll back down to go to the where, wherever they need to in the shop. And they're like, you know what? I'm just doing this myself. And they just went in there and they fixed it themselves. Um... Additionally, some other nice kind of quality of life stuff, again, stuff that we have been asking for that we said goes a long way, is just like when you go back to the campaign, let's say guild campaign, it shows you where you sort of last picked up off of. So like if I was farming a specific character, it should go back to that character, which is a nice touch that you don't start at just where the furthest part of the campaign you're on anymore, right? That's pretty big. Um, I will say there is some rate like glyph management tools that need to eventually get added to the game. You can't sell glyphs except one by one. You can't bulk sell them, which is a little bit annoying, I would say. Um, and there's just some other management tools that I would like to see come into the game. Like it's pro probably pretty burdensome to swap glyphs from, you know, one whole raid team to another whole raid team. Let's say you've got a really good set of last 25 last stand or however many last stand glyphs for five characters. You want to swap it between one raid team to the next. That's just going to be so, so burdensome. And I don't know how worth it that's going to be. I would like to see those types of features, though, added into the game. Other than that, very happy with the rollout of glyphs. I think some things need to be tuned. I'll talk more about that, hopefully, when I do my glyph basics sort of video. Um, big takeaway there, no spoilers, except for the fact that life steal is really not worth it. Um, it's truly one of the worst glyph sets that they have in the game. The only other thing I want to talk about is that next Saturday, uh, the 16th, I'm doing a Lord of the Rings and Lord of the Rings home trivia event hosted by me and Celtic Owl, our fellow lore nerd and buff. And we have three different sort of sections, I should say. And each sort of section winner is going to get some free merch. So these are the times here in different time zones. I've also posted this in my Discord under the announcements. Stop on by, have some fun. We are going to, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a competitive trivia um, 
and some cool prizes and i think we've got we've got some good stuff planned so stop on by for that and then i'm going to keep I'll, I'll come out with a, i think a glyph basic video tomorrow i'm going to work on that and then the last thing is just that i will be doing a thorn unlock on monday on a live stream again i've posted that announcement in my discord as well so stop on by if you want to see how Lor uh, thorn i almost called him lauren how Thorn is going to perform. I'm probably only going to unlock him at five stars, and then we're going to test him out in chapter two of the raid. But that's all for me. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.